What is this? Oh, there's another one. Hey, hey, what, what are you doing? What, why are you leaving all these potatoes everywhere? I'm spudding my way out. Safety first, everybody. Welcome back to another video. Today we are out on Upper Red Lake, Northern Minnesota. This is like the first hot spot that everybody wants to go to when the ice season fires up. And we're out here, today is Tuesday, um, Tuesday before Thanksgiving, not sure the exact date. I got Donnie Obert and his buddy, and uh, they actually spudded out ahead of us. And me and Brad Hawthorne just walked up. So we're gonna do a little bit of fishing and uh, we'll let you know what's going on out here. Ooh, there's one. Come on, he's coming back. Come on, little buddy. First mark of the day. Not a biter, but I wasn't exactly ready for him. I was kind of messing around with the camera. So uh, that's a good sign. We're set up. There's uh, my stuff there where I just marked that fish. We're setting up right on the uh just the cracks here and what's what's your thought process with that donnie so i've always thought that uh you know red is relatively featureless i know there are some rock piles here and there uh but this early ice on red i think of the ridges that collect snow like this almost the same as you would look at a mud line in the summer somewhere where a predator that can see in in lower light conditions may hang out uh, where there's less light penetrating the water column, right? So uh, it's a it's a good ambush spot if you are a predator. A uh, good spot to sit out of sight and and wait for something to eat to swim by. Yeah, I'm with you. No, it's it is interesting. It's like every single time we set up, it doesn't matter if it's Red Lake, if it's Mille Lacs, any of the above. It seems like these cool crack spots. It for some reason there's it, you know it's it's something different. So. so a lot of times where you see these ridges and cracks is actually it's relative to the bottom composition so if you have a, a depth change a lot of times there will be a matching ridge in the ice where it breaks and that's just a difference in pressure so it's it's something to keep in mind as you're going over these pressure ridges you know almost every one that's a real long kind of straight line that probably corresponds with a depth change on the bottom yeah i mean that makes a lot of sense another another reason why i like to be right next to these guys is in case one of them busts off on the close. <laughs> you want to be on the right side I, of I, it. <laughs> so I, I got some time to react. That's right. <laughs> All right, so here's the portable setup right now we got going on. Got the GoPros, got the live unit, everything piled on top. It's gonna get a lot less organized once the walleye start to come. Well, what do you think about that? Well, that's the first one of this ice season, 2022. Got it on that glass buckshot. That's a secret color there. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. <laughs> oh man, the first one always feels so good. Nice. Yeah, we'll take it. That's a good start. Yeah, that one smoked it. Oh, okay. that's a sandwich. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> Perfect Red Lake sandwich. Oh, now it's definitely a sandwich. <laughs> well, it was gonna be a sandwich regardless. <laughs> <That was> <laughs> All right, so this is the very first trip of the year. And when I'm out here, I like to keep it super simple. I packed really light. I actually have like that smallest size uh, otter pull behind sled. And as far as presentation goes, I'm just gonna start with the very simple little perch colored buckshot. It's nothing crazy. I don't like to do anything fancy early on. Uh, one thing I do like to do on red is use baits that are a little bit more aggressive as well. So I probably will bust out a puppet minnow, uh, might pull out a ripless, uh, lipless crankbait as well at some point during the day, but that's what I'm starting off with today. And then, you know, we're gonna go from there and see how things go. It's coming in real slow. And the second I say a word, he darts off 
All right. Ooh. All right, so we just made a good size move and uh, we were sitting at about nine and a half and now we are out. I don't know, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna drill some holes. We were not seeing a ton of fish. Fished a few hours and caught, caught a couple. So my thought process is get moving along. You know, early ice can be a little bit tough. And when I say early, I mean like super early ice. You know, when it just caps over, um, the bike can be a little bit slow. So um, with that in mind, I'm just gonna go to a place where we're gonna see some more fish. Just like that, a nice pair of fish coming in, taking a look, not biting, kind of coming up and looking at the bait. Uh, yeah, that is just kind of like a microchasm of what today has been so far. Seems like the fish are not moving around a ton. Uh, you know, this lake has not been capped over very long and oftentimes the fish just aren't gonna be feeding as much in these conditions. That's why like this first week or so, of the ice season up here on Red Lake is never quite as good. Um, so like if you're the first one out there, you might be the first person, you know, one of the first people to catch a walleye in the state of Minnesota. But with that being said, usually the very, very best days do not happen right away on this lake. Um, and they're just, the fish just aren't always gonna be in a super good mood. And those two fish coming in and, you know, barely even looking at the bait is a great example of what you'll often see this time of year, so. That'll be way better, yeah. Oh, dude, I got one right here. Right here. I'm gonna get bit. Yep, you're getting bit. Hang on. Oh, I almost... Oh, crap. All right. Oh, no. The camera wasn't running, but you guys did see it right there on the Mega Live. This thing came in so stinking angry. Like, oh, my word. God, I just turned the GoPro off because we were about to wrap this, uh, wrap this day of fishing up. But holy cow, this thing came in, absolutely obliterated it. Ate it so deep that it, it's down in the gills. But there we go, that was a, uh, god, I thought for sure that thing was a pike with how fast it came in. Holy cow. There we go, this is just kind of like your typical red lake fish, not giant, but perfect for the frying pan. All right, so just a quick update on what we got going on here. So we've kind of been fishing in different areas throughout the course of the day, we started out in like, it was like nine foot or so, nine and a half. And then a couple of us scooted out deeper where we saw a number of fish, but we actually never scored. And then the crew moved up shallow and I was kind of fishing out deep while they were while they were getting set up shallow. And they actually caught a couple fish while I was out there. And then since I've been here, there was the one fish on the uh, set line and then I just got that one jigging. The activity level has been definitely the hottest here up shallow and that's just kind of like a good little tip as you get into the evening, move up shallow. It's like super, super conventional wisdom, but oftentimes folks like to kind of just stay where they're at for the last few hours. And there's a fish. That looks smaller, probably a perch. No, oh, that's a good oh, no. one, Nick. That's a good one. That's a walleye. You're damn right. Oh. Yeah, it is. Bang. Oh, no. Shit. Get down there. He's, shoot, he's shoot. still there. He's still there. He's still there. He went to your, he went screen right. Okay. Looks like he's gone. That's a good tip for people. Like when you know which direction your fish rent, screen right, you know? Yeah. Shoot. Not to pull a salt in that, but that looked like a magnum slot. Yeah, that did look like a pretty good fish. Well, oh, Brad's got him. All right, there we go. Dude, I think this was your fish that came in and bolted on your on your Mega Live. But here, I gotta show you something. Glass buckshot. Down the hatch? Down the hatch. Like that is, uh... so if you guys are coming up, by far a little bit slower day today, 
on uh, upper red, but definitely the glass buckshot. If you need to seal the deal on fish that are that are coming in and like slow days where you have to call them in from a distance, the glass buckshot is the deal. There you go. Killer. I got one right here, Brad. Oh, that was a hard swipe. Brad. Get him. There we go. There you have it, Red Lake Walleye. And uh, we're losing light here, Brad. I think we should take off. Yeah, time to get going. Brad's like packing up, he's <laughs> ready to go. And I'm just like aggressively jigging. So anyway, I'm gonna get this guy back or should we keep him? What do you think? I'm hungry. All right, we're keeping him. All right, but we're also gonna take off. <laughs> <laughs> now that you spent the day out here, Brad, what would you say is like, the Red Lake report as far as like conditions. And uh, well, I can already say the bite's not particularly good, but that could change real quick. Yeah, Red Lake, like the bite's usually, it's it's usually good, right? Yeah. It's What I see is usually the first or second time out here, it's usually a little slower and that just progressively heats up until it peaks and it falls off. But I would say that this year on Red, from what I've seen today, Red is shaping up to have like the best ice year it's had in three or four years. Yeah. So like this video, I guess I'm going to try and get it out tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Yep. And like if someone's looking to go out like, I don't know, day after Thanksgiving or something, like conditions are pretty decent, probably still going to be walking. Oh yeah. I would, I would, it's hard to say because the ice grows so fast on this lake. There might even be people allowing, you know, uh, ATV traffic on Friday or Saturday. I'm, I'm venturing to guess they'll probably do walkout, but like they, they might be seeing six to eight inches by Friday or Saturday. You yeah, know? I mean, there's already like quite a few. Someone pulled pulled out here on the ATV and only got so far, didn't drive all the way out. But yeah, so this, I guess, long story short, there's a lot of ice, a decent amount of ice. Um, biggest thing I would recommend is going on Facebook, a uh, couple Facebook pages to recommend. The Real Upper Red Lake Report's a good one. JR's is a good one. Yep. Rogers Resort's a good one. Westwind's a good one. All those, all those places usually have good uh, reports right on their Facebook page. And uh, yeah, that's about all we got for you in this video. I'm going to put a video right over Brad's face right now. You can click on, that's actually me fishing with uh, Brett last year, Mr. McComas. And uh, we were on Red Lake last year for Sice. And uh, you can watch that video. There was a little bit more fish catching action.